Welcome, everybody. I'm excited for our interview today. <clears throat> we are here with Jenny Curtis and Jonathan Bangs, two of the creative forces behind Solar, a sci-fi thriller podcast. Uh, Jenny, we'll start with you. You are the director of Solar. Is that correct? That is correct. Director, producer, and one of the voices. If you've heard Solar, I am the voice of Ali, so I am the voice of the ship. Oh, that's awesome. And Jonathan, what, are, what is your role in Solar? I play secondary pilot Jamal Davis. Whoa, uh, he is secondary prior to the show starting. Prior. You're, first, you're, you're the first pilot now. <laughs> first in all of our hearts. <laughs> first in everyone's heart. That's that's so, that's as the show evolves. That, that tends to happen. <laughs> I uh, I kind of gave it probably the worst uh, intro ever. So I'm going to give you the creatives the opportunity to say just for our listeners who might not be familiar with it, what is Solar? Yeah, um, we like to say it is a journey to the center of the solar system and an exploration of the vastness of the human spirit. So it is a audio drama. That's deep, podcast. by the way. <laughs> oh, it's a deep show. If you like poetry, you'll love this show. If you like a uh, hard action thriller, you'll love this show. We've got everything for everybody. But um, it is a 12 part sci fi drama set in space it's a crew that basically does a mission to the sun and something goes terribly wrong they're hit by a solar flare and the surviving members of the crew who are stranded on opposite sides of the spacecraft have to work together to try to contact earth try to figure out what went wrong uh work together to survive basically. And we have an amazing cast, John Bangs being one of our leads. We also have Stephanie Beatrice, Helen Hunt, Alan Cumming, Danielle Pinnock, Colin Ford, and Yachtco, just incredible people on board this, <laughs> on board this ship, pun not intended, Ew. but now intended. <laughs> and, uh, and this, you mentioned it's sci-fi, but this is, this is a podcast. Yes, this is so, a, podcast. a podcast. So I'm going to, I'm going to dig into that deep because i'm excited about that but first you, you drop some tidbits now you two are actors and you're huge in your own right but those are some heavy hitter names you listed yeah mm -hmm. like like real heavy hitters like you know i've seen them in tons and tons and tons of movies how do you get those type of folks to do this with you um you know uh i'm still pinching myself that we got to work with the people who were in this show but it was it was the standard process of casting we sent out offers we uh, to some of our actors, we wrote letters saying, here's why we are passionate about this show and why we hope you will take a look. I think it really, really helps when you have a great script that actors are excited about. And Chris Porter, who wrote the script, is just, uh, John describes it best, but he writes in a way that actors can drop into in an instant. And it's just fun to play in his words. So I think that helped in getting people excited to come on board. John, when you're recording these parts, uh, are you doing it like when you watch it on TV, they have this big sound booth studio and everyone's got their head set on, they're talking. Are, mm -hmm. are you doing this with them or is this everyone's doing their own part and then they kind of mix it together? Well, uh, the entirety of it was the recording process was made um, during COVID. Oh, I'd okay. say uh, so 20, the beginning of 2021. So not at the height, but come somewhere in the middle of the whole well, we're still in it. You get my point. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, so there is a lot of rules and protocols that took place. Um, the studio setup was, well, for one, as soon as you entered, we had before you even entered, you had to fill out a questionnaire regarding whether you were in contact with someone that had COVID, whether you had COVID the whole night, uh, procedures in that manner. And then after that, you can't even open any of the doors we uh, recorded. I can say all this. This is good, Jenny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Shane, uh, just making sure you got it. Uh, Shane Salk at um, yeah, Shane Recording Salk Studios. Yeah. Yes, Shane Salk Productions. So I would have to text him as soon as I arrived and parked, and then he would have to open every door for me to get into the actual booth. And that's just getting into the uh, facility. And then as soon as I would get into the booth, there would be a screen that will mostly be Chris Porter, who's the creator and the, the brilliant writer. Um, and then the only person I would act with is someone that I love acting with. And that is the brilliant person right here, Jenny Curtis. <laughs> and we have a familiarity um, and just an acting rapport. So having that one um, foundation for the recording, because beforehand, I didn't know all the details of all the people that were going to be involved. Later on, I knew. But... Um, it came back to the core of acting and being in a room with someone 
and having that partner and um, telling the story from that humble seed, from that humble beginning and uh, everything. It's almost like you prepped me for my next question, which was, can you tell us a little bit how acting <laughs> on, a, on an audio format is different than acting, you know, either on stage or on sort of a video format? Because, uh, you know, it's got to, I assume there's different skills and things you got to focus on or work on yeah. to do that. You want to go first on that, Jenny? Sure. Yeah, sure. I, I will say for this, so John and I both went to uh, acting school. It's It's where we come from. So we are essentially trained to be, uh, actors in different formats. And so I, I would like to say it's all the same when it comes down to the core of what we were, uh, sure. what we were trying to do in this, uh, in this project, it was really, really important to us to have authentic performances because uh, I'm someone, especially being a performer myself, who's very sensitive to hearing audio projects where the performances are pushed because people are a little worried that the audience won't be along for the ride if they can't see what's happening. Yeah. And I just, I don't believe in that. I think that's, I don't know if I can swear, but it's BS, you know, <laughs> I think people. <laughs> you can swear if you have to, it's all good. <laughs> People, I think, will go along for the ride with an authentic performance. So for us, it was really important to do everything we could to give our performers uh, every tool that, that we could possibly give them in the middle of a pandemic when we can't have them in a room acting together. And so I would perform <laughs> as best I could with all of my acting prowess, I would perform every role so that our actors in the booth would actually have something to play off of. We didn't want to do the type of recording uh, where, you know, you have one line. So the actor does it three different yeah. ways, just that one line. We would run through the entire scene. So the actor in the booth could do the whole emotional roller coaster. And then we would go back and maybe pick up a page or pick up a paragraph. But we tried to make it as actor friendly as we could. Wait, Jay, so let me get this straight. So the other actors would come in and play their role and you would play every other role for them to act with. So you're the linchpin of this whole operation. Jenny Curtis is the glue to solar in more ways than you can imagine. I, I, <laughs> so <laughs> Jenny, do you have any stories you're allowed to give us? I mean, if you've interacted with all these folks coming in, can you tell us anything funny that happened or anything, any anecdotes from being basically every role in this to different people, everything to everyone, I guess. I will. I mean, I will say I could talk about this show for days. So, you know, just tell me when to shut up. But uh, one of our favorite stories to talk about is Alan, uh, Alan Cumming, who was our only actor we couldn't have come physically into the studio because we're in Los Angeles and he's based in New York. And so he essentially accepted the role and said, I'd love to do it. But since it's we're in COVID, I'm going up to my cabin in the mountains can I record there? And we were like, Oh God, okay, we'll figure it out. And we sent him equipment and he kind of set up this, he has this space in his house. That's like a small room. He, I think he has some sound material in there. It should work fine. Um, and we started recording one of his big scenes and uh, a few minutes in, I was like, I'm so sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm hearing something. And it turns out there was a storm going on outside in the mountains in New York, and we could hear the rainfall. And this is a show set wow. in space. Yeah, there's there not a lot no of rain, rain in space. <laughs> there's no rain in space. That's my first and time so hearing this story. <laughs> <laughs> so I said to Alan, I was like, look, we'll work around your schedule. Just let us know when you can reschedule for, and we'll do whatever works for you. And he was like, no, no, no. He's a theater actor. The show must go on. He's like, well, I got this. He ran upstairs. He grabbed two heavy quilts and came back and basically held the quilts up above his head and put them over himself and the microphone and deadened <laughs> all the sound outside. And we did like, and I think this was while we were recording one of our epic, there are epic spacewalks in this show where things are going wrong. People are yelling at each other. And Alan was just performing this scene, holding quilts over his head. And I... Like what a man, what an actor, how, how uh, just amazing. And there would be like a, a break and he would be like, 
I need to take a second. And he, you know, pulled the quilts off and he's just drenched in sweat. Yeah. We're like, oh my God. It's not comfortable. I have a three-year-old and she makes me read to her under the blanket. It gets really hot under there. <laughs> yeah. yeah <it's- laughs> so it was, that was one of my favorite experiences. Cause it, not only do I admire him as an actor, but like, and as a human, but as like someone who you're working with, who gives you his all when he, mm-hmm. you know, doesn't need to, he could have just as easily been like, yeah, I'll call you in a few hours. He, I'm so impressed and we loved it for him. We may circle back and get more of these stories because that was gold. Um, <laughs> but I, I kind of wanted to touch on sort of the, the beginnings of this project. So when a lot of people think podcasts, they probably think one of these true crimes, solving an unsolved murder or, or innocent person, or just two people talking about what they like that week. So how does you know that format go to like a sci-fi epic, which you would think would be, you know, big screen, that sort of stuff? How did, how did the genesis this start? Um, whew. so the genesis of this project, yeah, Kurt Co Media, which is our company, uh, we did have a bunch of talk shows. We had politics and health and entertainment, all sorts of that kind of talking show. Uh, but from the beginning, Chris Porter and I were in this company in order to make solar. So like while we had other talk shows what, that we were making along the way through development, this was always supposed to be where we ended up because uh, for us, it's our background. We're storytellers. And also because who doesn't want to be making an epic cinematic sci-fi drama when, when that's uh, open to you. So I think it's, it's a very exciting space in podcasting audio drama is and you know people people used to say this back in my olden days uh back (laughs) when like working in digital when people were saying like web series and digital that's the wild west and everybody's doing whatever they want and nobody's figured it out yet and now it's sort of people have stopped talking about it that way because streaming became a thing and all of these companies came in but i've heard that exact lingo start in the podcasting world, people are like, podcasting is the wild west. You can play and you can explore. And so for us, I think it's part of that, like, this is a platform where we can go try to bend rules before rules are really cemented. So for stuff like our show, where I said, we have 12 episodes, there are also 13 little mini scenes that come out outside of our episodes because we wanted to, and there's no rule telling us. Because we can do it. (laughs) (laughs) So it's just that, um, It's a really exciting space to be able to play in. And that's why we're here. So talk to me about the challenges of taking, yeah, you've used the word cinematic. We've talked about spacewalks and and the solar flares. I mean, you know, one of the great things about sci-fi is they do that and they put it on the screen and you can say, wow, my brain is kind of igniting. How do you do that in an audio form? Like what are the, how do you translate those great ideas into a podcast? Um. I believe this truly and fully that someone's imagination is far better than anything you can ever show them on screen. So while I come from visual mediums and I love movies, I love visuals. I also love inventing it from myself in my head. And I think that is the concept of cinematic is I think really just how far can your imagination go? And podcasting allows people to ignite their imagination. And I think the more tools you give them to do that, uh, the better they can be at it. So for our show, we are giving the listener as many tools as we can for the audio sphere. We, we have stunning music, which is also composed by Chris Porter because he's an insane person who knows how to do everything. Uh, (laughs) But we have, Stunning words, stunning music. The sound design by CJ Drummeller is, um, <laughs> I keep accidentally making space puns, but I feel like the sound design is literally <laughs> otherworldly. Like it is, yeah. uh, it, it just takes you out of your element because it's not something you hear every day. You don't hear these sounds that he's created and found and mushed together. Like it just puts you in another place. And so with all of that and the incredible performances, obviously with all of that wrapped together, the, the listener who is truly engaged will have a very strong visual in their head because audio is more powerful than we give it credit for. Um, 
Jonathan, when you're when you're acting for this podcast, do you? I mean, how robust is the script? Do you have to visualize this in your head, or does the script say there's a big thing over here to your right, and you kind of know that? Like, how much do you have to let your brain do that? How much do they give? Uh, uh, I've been kind of. I was. It's funny you said that. Um, the cool thing about imagination to me personally is I feel like it's a very youthful thing, and when you're a kid you are at your prime imagination powers, whatever that may be. And as you get older, you kind of like life society kind of dries that up and the imagination kind of gets a little uh, more th- like thwarted of some sort. But uh, in acting, you have to, if like that's your main tool. And I've been able to still keep that childlike presence and that imagination as well. And so in order to get into something and jump into something, uh, sometimes like uh, not everything I would understand of the world, but I wouldn't dissect and ask too many questions because I jump in and then figure out the answers along the way. And then throughout time, I would be able to build. And even like in the studio somewhat of sort, I would kind of carve out the space ship in my own head, the whole little capsules and everything that I was in. It already felt like I was in a capsule, isolated from everybody due to how I entered the space, you know? Yeah, you can't <laughs> touch the doorknob. That's yeah, pretty yeah, 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 exactly. So <laughs> it wasn't too far-fetched at uh, imagining the world and uh, kind of bringing that all together. Yeah. Were you allowed to deviate from the script at all? Like, you know, some actors are like, oh, he wouldn't say this, he would... He would say that, or, or are you, were you um, doing that? Was it pretty hardcore because you had to mash up with all the other actors? Uh, for the most part, it was sticking to the script. There may have been like a few audible sounds or maybe like yes, or like I would say a few things differently that would sound more natural. Um, there were there were some yeah. days where like it, we would be running a scene and suddenly I'd be like this, this yeah. doesn't sound like it feels right to you. How can we make this sound better? Yeah. And I, I know we did that with a... I think it was, you were talking about like out, out, he's looking out his window at all of this debris in space. And I can't remember what the line was, but. I remember uh, you talking was, about that. Yeah. The line now is you should have seen it right after the blast and whatever the line was, we did it like 15 times. And I, <laughs> after that, I was like, Chris, can we just change the line? Like it sounds. <laughs> it it, it sounds looks like better on the page and it does come out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, and yeah, that's, yeah. But also the thing with having John and like John was involved in this process from the very beginning. So we did have, we were lucky enough to get to develop the script with him where he was generous with his time and would come in and like read through the script with us. And we would say like, what feels right? What doesn't, what do we need to go work on? And Mm -hmm. so I think that having John involved from such an early space at least made us uh, comfortable with the script before we got into the recording because we'd already worked out all the bugs. By the way, I'm just going to announce that uh, we should have started the space puns drinking game, like the, for the interview. Like every time people would be like completely hammered by now. Um, now that you mentioned, it, I'm like, yeah, there's been a lot of those accidental ones. So, uh, that's a that's a great game. That's a good concept <laughs> for somewhere down the line. <laughs> yeah. um, what you know. I, a lot of podcasts we talked about are people talking about stuff. You can kind of listen on your iPod or when you're in the car. Mm-hmm. Is there a preferred or recommended way to listen to this? Because it sounds a little bit more robust than just me and my brother talking to each other, you know, over the phone or whatever. Please listen on headphones. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Headphones, yeah. your best headphones you can possibly listen on. Because uh, to go back to CJ Drummeller sound design, it's not just mono design it is a full 360 degree world we used uh uh, dolby atmos and dear vr so there are sounds that are coming from above you there are sounds that are coming from around yeah Mm -hmm. it's everywhere so you're traveling on yeah yeah it it tells the to go back to like what's cinematic about this it tells a story in a way that you're fully immersed if you close your Mm -hmm. eyes and you're in the press conference in our first uh, episode this reporter who's yelling out these lines, who suddenly is drawing your attention, he's coming from your right. And suddenly you realize you're sitting next to this man and you're in between this conversation with him and the people who are at the podium. And it just completely changes the experience. Now, if you have to listen on, you know, your speakerphone, 
it's a great story. You'll enjoy it. But you'll miss a, you'll miss you'll a miss. lot. Yeah, yeah. It sounds like there's a lot of technical work that goes in this more than just the script writing. And, and what, uh, this is probably the question I should have asked first, but I wanted to tease people into getting excited about it. Where can people <laughs> get their hands, or I should say ears, on solar? I love that. I love the puns. Uh, <laughs> you started it, Jenny. <laughs> I did. <laughs> My favorite. Uh, everywhere you listen to podcasts. So Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, Stitcher, uh, Google Podcasts, Pocket Casts. I could just keep going, but there are Apollo. There are so many platforms and we're trying to get on all of them. So if you find a podcast platform that if you find a podcast platform that you don't see us on, let us know and we'll fix it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, podcast platforms, all of them. All right. Before I ask my next couple of questions, I want to give you an opportunity because the last time I opened the door and you ran through it with a great one, do you have another anecdote that you can shock us with? Because the, the, the rainstorm one was classic. Oh, a shocking one. Or, or, a, or a funny one or a great one or just something we wouldn't expect. I, I will say, and I'll let John explain his experience with it, but one of uh, my favorite days of recording, John, when we're talking about performance, um, mm. there is <laughs> there is a, a scene after Jamal, his character, has gone through something physically taxing, and he is really... Um, beaten down and and lacking energy and it's just it's a hard time for him so being the physical actors that we are uh we took john away from his chair in front of his microphone with his script and we you know i think we even turned down the lights in the booth and we mm -hmm. put him on the floor in the corner curled up in a ball and brought the little microphone down to him Method so, that acting. He, <laughs> so that he would be physically yeah. performing from this little little position and again i said i'd let john talk and i just no it's it's it's, so. good, it's, good. it's funny it's funny dan that you said method acting because i mean yeah by definition but in my heart in my head i feel like that's the only way to execute truth um and that's once again goes to the tr the training we have and um our foundation it, uh, that's the only and Chris Porter's words as well. Like the only way to truly get in that rhythm is to shape yourself into the character. Um, and then once you lock yourself into that, you're completely on the right motion and you can take yourself to certain levels that you didn't even foresee. And um, that's the reason why I put myself in that position or I would do anything. I would. Um, do a cartwheel, I'm doing a monologue as long as I know that I get that little treat as an actor, you know? Yeah, this so. is why I'm not in the industry because after hearing you say that, I want to write like a crazy script just to make you do backflips. And... <laughs> <laughs> I just want to see you like, you got to get into this, Jonathan. You see you do it, man. <laughs> get on your hands. You got to come in the gym and you got to see me put in the reps. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But I don't care about the plot. I just want to make Jonathan do cool stuff. <laughs> so um, I, I know you're probably, you know, kind of really pushing this, but a lot of times you're busy folks or maybe there's solar two or something, but what's, what's next for both of you or, or do you have a next yet? What, what can we look forward to next? Uh, right now we're only just over halfway through the release of our show. So all of all of my time and attention and energy is going toward making sure that this show gets the audience it deserves because I think it is worth listening to. And I am a picky person. I was going to say <laughs> swear word. <laughs> I am a picky, picky person. And so uh, this isn't a show I want to give up on and making sure that it gets the audience it deserves. So that's what we're focused on. And then hopefully... We'll tell some more uh, stories from this world. John? I'm just doing a few acting <laughs> things. What's most important <laughs> is Solar, and I am so grateful to be a part of this project. And I'm grateful to be a part of uh, seeing the impact it's having and seeing the growth. Um, a, a, immense amount of work was put into this. And to see how it's flourishing is like uh, such a rewarding thing as an artist, but just as a person that's been a part of the whole process. 
I do love that answer. I'm just doing some acting things. No big deal. <laughs> yeah. <no. laughs> the rest of us like, that's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the last question I always like to ask is you, you've mentioned the podcast is available wherever fine podcasts are found, but are there any other social media or website or, or thing you want to plug to drive people to check you out, either you personally or the show itself or anything like that? Yeah, absolutely. In a totally selfish uh, way, my personal socials are at the Jenny Curtis. Uh, and I'm on Instagram and Twitter, although I'm not great at Twitter, but I'm getting better. Um, and our show handle is Solar the Podcast on all the things, all the things. Go follow Solar the, Solar the Podcast. We try to put out really cool content. We have a lot of behind the scenes. We try to spill some secrets because this is definitely a show where uh, there are secrets to mine from the story. And we try to give people little nuggets so that they can pull on that thread. Those are two completely different metaphors, but you know. But they're not <laughs> space related, so it's okay. But they're not space related. <laughs> so we're not taking a shot. No shots. <laughs> uh, and John, I forget your handles. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. Um, Instagram, Jonathan Bangs, like the hairstyle, B-A-N-G-S with four S's. Um, <laughs> not, 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 one, three, not, two, not, not five, yeah. four, <laughs> seven, not <but> four. <laughs> four S's. <laughs> and um, Twitter, John Bangs, I believe. I need to get more uh, in tune with that. Um, but yeah, Instagram, that's my handle. Find, find us find us there. Talk to us. Tell us how sad yeah. we are, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Tell them how much you enjoyed this interview despite Darren's bad puns, you know? <laughs> uh, the bad Phenomenal puns made puns. it great. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I really appreciate you guys taking the time to talk to us. I, I usually... Um, have you know either watched the movie beforehand when I interview? So I bear, I'm glad you bore. I'm glad you were willing to bear with me while I ask some probably stupid questions. But it sounds like a great project, and I'm going to go check it out uh, as soon as we get off here, and everyone else should as well. Yeah, I hope you do. Also, like, just let us know. We'll come back and talk to you about it once you have other things to talk about. Oh, be let careful! I will definitely <laughs> allow you to come back and talk to me if you if you say that you'll never get out of our our sphere. So. <laughs> Oh, I, 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 no, no, this I, is I, fun. I, no, please. Yeah. 